In previous videos, I've shown you how to use the OnStar system in a GM vehicle to manually make an emergency 911 call for free without ever paying for an OnStar subscription. We've also discussed how any working mobile phone, at least 4G and later in the United States, is also capable of making a free 911 call without activation or a subscription of any kind. This opens the door to all kinds of options for an emergency safety net. Everything from a cheap $20 Walmart flip phone without service to the Android or iPhone you may already have in your pocket, which is capable of some pretty amazing emergency features in its own right. If you haven't seen seen either of the previous videos yet, then I encourage you to pause here and check them out first, since they include important information about US law and how our 911 emergency services systems work. There's also some valuable insight into why you may be better off forgetting about in-vehicle telematics systems altogether when it comes to safety. For this third and final installment in the series, I wanted to touch on the top questions to come out of the first video with some additional testing, which also helps demonstrate just how opaque and kludgy the world of connected car technology really is. Then with a few final tests, I want to take a quick and dirty look at emergency call route overall in the United States, which is significantly more complex and nuanced than I think a lot of people know or appreciate. But that's a little later in the video. So what even is a connected car? Well, generally it refers to any automobile that's able to provide two-way communication between the vehicle's systems and the outside world. This includes things like sending automatic diagnostic emails, loading directions and navigation data, the ability to control the car with an app on your phone, and crucially, the ability to call emergency services, sometimes automatically, in the event of a crash or other emergency while you're behind the wheel. As I've explained previously in this series, Series, U.S. law provides for our ability to call 911 for free from any mobile phone at any time. But not all connected cars include a built-in mobile phone. In fact, General Motors' OnStar system is somewhat unique for its inclusion of both data and voice cellular hardware. When OnStar first came on the scene in 1996, it was only available as a luxury option on a handful of Cadillac models. This was a time when only 16% of Americans owned a mobile phone, compared to the more than 98% that do as of 2025, so including the hardware in the car itself made sense. While an OnStar system is a mobile phone, many other telematic systems are not. And that's what leads me into the most popular question by far from the first video. Will this work with my insert make and model? Well, the answer there is a complicated maybe, but probably not. Pretty much all makes, models, and trim levels of General Motors vehicles sold in North America since 2015 include a 4G or better OnStar system that should function for free emergency calls. It's the other manufacturers where things get more complicated. Some car maker systems handle mobile data, but don't include mobile voice hardware, and so aren't bound by the laws requiring free emergency 911 access. Some manufacturers use systems which require a Bluetooth connection to a mobile phone in order to work at all, and others use a combination of the two methods for their various subscription and non-subscription based functions. Next, we're going to test a few of these systems to demonstrate exactly what I mean. Since the whole premise of this series is to show you how to make a free emergency phone call that skirts their subscription services, the vehicle manufacturers themselves were likely to be of little assistance here. For that reason, I decided to partner with a local pre-owned vehicle dealership to access the greatest possible variety of makes and models for testing. So before we start, although this video is not sponsored in any way, I want to genuinely thank United Auto Sales on Hartford Ave in Providence for generously allowing me access to their vehicle inventory to conduct these tests. The first vehicle we're testing today is a 2022 Toyota Camry XSE, which includes a telematics system with Toyota's Safety Connect service, and is equipped with a covered SOS button above the rearview mirror. Unfortunately, none of the phone-based calling features are available without a mobile phone paired to the car via Bluetooth, so nothing works. You might wonder if pressing the SOS button does anything, though. It does not. The next vehicle I tested today was a 2022 Hyundai Santa Fe, which doesn't have any kind of SOS or emergency button, and although it does include hands-free calling features, they similarly require a phone be paired over Bluetooth before you can even access them, and so it didn't work either. The last car we're going to test today is a 2020 Honda Civic Coupe. This vehicle includes support for the Honda Link service, which requires linking via Bluetooth to your smartphone as well as an Android or iOS app to fully enable all features. At first it looked promising, since the buttons, menus, and features here are very similar to GM's OnStar, and although it lets you try to initiate calling features without any phone connected, the attempts quickly fail, reminding you that you need to connect a phone first. After the beep, say a command. Call 911. So what are the takeaways with these tests? Well, mainly that if it's not OnStar, it probably requires a phone to be connected in order to place an emergency call. That said, pairing your existing smartphone to your car should allow some method of hands-free call to 911 should you need it, whether that phone has paid service or not. And as discussed in the previous videos, if the phone is an Android or iPhone, it may have the ability to automatically detect a crash and call 911 all by itself. The last items I wanted to test today are in relation to the actual emergency services phone number itself. In the US, 911 is the official 
official emergency number across all 50 states, even though it's not an international standard. And that's because it makes use of the N11 numbering scheme that's been part of our telephone networks in North America for several decades. While 911 is among the more commonly known and used of the abbreviated dialing codes, others include 411 for local directory assistance, 511 for local traffic information, and 811 for underground utility marking, just to name a few. Emergency services phone numbers are far from 100% universal, with more than 20 abbreviated number combinations used in different parts of the world. Internationally, there are a couple of options other than 911 which see the most widespread use. 112 is the standard in Europe and many other countries worldwide, while 999 is commonly used in the United Kingdom, Hong Kong, and a few others. So what would happen if you were an international traveler to the US and didn't know 911 was our emergency number? If you call 112 or 999, will it still work? That's what we're about to find out. As I've said throughout this series, placing test calls to emergency services is entirely legal and is a common practice in the telecom field, especially when installing and upgrading landline phone systems in commercial buildings. But you can do it too, as long as you take the critical step of calling the Public Safety Answering Point, or PSAP, ahead of time at their publicly listed non-emergency number. Calling ahead is required by law, and depending on the size and complexity of a given call center, you may be able to conduct your test relatively on demand or need to schedule it well in advance. If you're interested, then you should be able to find the non-emergency phone number for your local PSAP with a quick Google search. As with the previous phone tests in this series, I want to stress that your phone doesn't need to be the very latest and greatest in order to call 911 in an emergency, even when connected to a car for hands-free calling via Bluetooth, and for that matter, even without paid service. Our test phone for today is the 4G iPhone 6S, released nearly 10 years ago in 2015. It also doesn't have a SIM card, because as we've shown before, you don't need it for a free 911 emergency call. First up, let's try 112. Um, this is actually just a test call. Um, nothing further. Thank you. Cool. It actually worked. Next, let's try 999. I'm um, sorry, this was just a test call. Thank you. Uh, this is the last one. And what do you know? That worked too. Now, you may have noticed that the phone appeared to recognize both 112 and 999 as emergency numbers immediately after pressing send, which tells me there might be some logic in the phone itself. But most mobile carrier networks in the US, including AT&T and Verizon, are configured to reroute 112 and 999 calls to 911 instead. So this shouldn't be an issue in most places, but there's really no saying for sure. And while the same is purported to be true for many landline carriers, I obviously can't test them all. Although I don't imagine AT&T or Verizon would handle their landline phone networks too differently from their mobile phone networks in that regard, what I can tell you is that after testing with Cox Communications Residential Landline Service in Rhode Island, neither of the alternative numbers work. Sometimes though, safety is too important to rely on a maybe from the phone company. Modern public and commercial buildings like schools, hotels, and office buildings often have multi-line telephone systems that act almost like a mini phone company for the building or campus. These systems employ a special routing that can ensure emergency calls are sent to 911 every time, no matter the number used, and giving the highest priority to emergency calls, even if it means hanging up on another call in progress to free up a line. Many of these systems ordinarily require a user to press 9 first to access an outside line, but rules for emergency calls are typically able to bypass that requirement so it doesn't become a hindrance in the panic of an emergency. The more complex systems in hotels and schools are even able to send the PSAP correct dispatchable location information for the origination of an emergency call, right down to the specific room number, while at the same time also alerting staff that there's been an emergency call and from where the call was placed, enabling them to react even more quickly than the outside emergency responders when minutes and seconds matter. So what's the best option? Well, really there isn't one. Rather, it's all about whatever is the best option for you, but don't necessarily rely solely on an OnStar system, with or without a subscription. Carry a mobile phone and pair it with your car whether activated or not. Even better if it's an Android or iPhone with built-in 911 shortcuts and the ability to automatically detect a car crash. In the end, there are countless ways for you to reach emergency services and countless ways in which emergency services are working hard to stay reachable. Most importantly of all, be safe, attentive, and courteous when behind the wheel. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and if you did, I'd appreciate it if you take a second to give it a thumbs up, or a thumbs down if you hated it. I hope you'll also consider subscribing to the channel if you're not already for more new videos all the time covering an array of topics, including plenty more just like this one. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.